Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today's episode, we're going to tackle a question asked by the community. Specifically looking at the design section, we're going to look at how you can create a design idea that's a little bit more realistic, something that we can construct in the school workshop, and something that you guys will be able to complete in the time that you've got once we get back in September. Let's get started. Right, okay, so here we have our little theme uh, that I've created for myself, which is an old theme. Now, I've just got to say this before. Students often get this idea in their head that they have to solve the problem. Now, let's just take, for example, the 2020 theme, or one of the 2020 themes, which is uh, how can products be used to support the, 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 the climate emergency. Uh, and students will go away from that thinking, <gasps> I've been asked to solve the climate community. Uh, all, all of GCSE students in, in design technology have been asked to, to fix the global crisis of, of, of global warming. Uh, ooh, craggy. Well, what, a, what a feat that would be, wouldn't it, if you could do that in, in the six months that you're going to have to, to create that product. How fantastic would that be? Um, and what a burden it's got on your shoulders. So uh, the World Health Organization and all the, all the people around the world that are uh, worried about the environment have said, do you know what we could really do with? We could really do with getting this thing fixed. So we'll, we'll scrap all the, the, the years of years of time we've, we've spent trying to fix that problem. And do you know what we'll do? We'll throw it into a GCSE student's life. Um, that little 15, 16 year old person who's uh, you know, busy trying to contend with the fact that we've got a, a worldwide pandemic. They're, they're all right. They've got the goal and they've got the uh, the gumption to be able to crack on with that and, and get that fixed for us in six months' time, no problem. Um, don't worry about the fact that they've got a maths and an English GCSE to sit in about six months. Uh, but whilst they're, whilst they're at it, they can also have a crack at finishing and sorting out the, the climate change. Absolutely not. That's not what we're asking you to do. That's not what the exam board is asking you to do in no shape, way, shape or form. Equally, the, the, the other themes like um, how can we get, uh, how can we encourage people to uh, visit the cinema? That's not the government saying, oh, let's ask this 15 year old, 16 year old student to, to fix our, our leisure industry by dragging back sales into the, uh, into the, into the cinema world. That's not, that's not the idea at all. Um, what's actually being asked of you is to create a product that will support that that cause as it were so don't think uh, oh crumbs not only have i got to sort of study for my biology exam i've also got to fix the climate control issue as well what a burden that is to hold on the shoulders of a 15 or 16 year old student studying a gcse in design and technology they they are realistic problems that exist in the world and that's the beauty of the course that it does deal with real life scenarios and you will be contributing to help fix some of those issues but we're not asking you to solve the issue right little rant over let's get started here so i've created or used an old theme from a previous uh, year which was something along the lines of how can products be used to help people when traveling and this is the problem that some students come across when they start to um, do a design. So they might be thinking, well, travel, car, right, how can I create a product? Well, people sit in a car, so I'm going to design a chair. And then they start off the go with this little fancy idea, and then they start having a look at lumbar support and, and how I can make this cushion really comfortable. And I can have a little bit that sticks out here, and that goes in and out like that. Like that. Little arrows there to say, that's a crude little arrow. Let's do that again. So that goes in and out like that. It's all sat on this base like this, and the steering wheel's over here somewhere. Anyway, this this thing can rotate and and twist and and you know what? We'll we'll have some kind of uh, massaging device in there. Why not? And we'll have heated seats at the bottom as well, and we'll have all these things. And then then what we'll do is we'll we'll start labeling it as well. So let's uh, so we can have uh, movable headrest. Yeah, you know, it'll be made out of some kind of leather as well, like leather, the finest leather from some some uh, far off eastern land or somewhere like that, where some luxurious materials. And of course, it will be made like that. And it'll have a massaging area, so it'll have um, massages in three different uh, zones or something like that. 
And we've got that lumbar support, of course. And then, of course, we've got the heated seats. But why not? We'll throw in the cooling seats as well. So heated seats. Um, cooling fan. Why not? And then the, the, the movable area for, for, for the people with the longer legs. So we'll have, you know, for... for drivers. So... There we go, that, that, that's, that's our little idea, and, and you might be thinking, oh right, well I'm going to create that, I'm going to create a chair. And I haven't even thought about the arms yet, but we've got the arms on there, we've got like maybe a pivot while you're driving, who knows. Maybe it's got some kind of uh, airbag thing that just bursts out the side and, and hugs you, while you're in a, in a collision that keeps you alive, and it's made out of gel that disappears after a few seconds. Brilliant, great idea. Made, you know, it was very science fiction-esque, and... And some of these ideas here are things that actually exist in some of the luxurious cars. I mean, heated seats are a thing. Uh, lumbar support is definitely in a lot of cars now. The area where you can extend it, that's, that's something that's in in uh, in some some uh, cars. We've got leather, of course. Movable headrest. Yeah, we can make that pivot. But actually, let's just break this down into a design that we're going to make. So first of all, you're going to have to build this, right? And you're going to have to do it with, with items that you're going to find in a school workshop. Now, I, I can, I'm pretty confident that you're going to find it fairly difficult to, to get hold of that much leather. Um, the device used, you're going to have lots of motors in there that are going to have things that move things up and down and what have you. And, and let's be realistic, or let's try and be realistic, as the goal of this video is. How much time is it going to create to design the circuit, to operate the massaging system, to make the thing move in and out, the actual areas where you're going to have, have, have like racks and pinions to have hold things at different states on the headrest so it just doesn't just flop back and forth, so it actually like racks in so it just stays in one place. The heated element, how are you going to see, safely make sure that's going to work? How are you going to test it? You know. Uh, are you going to sit on it? Is it going to catch fire? I mean, what happens if you make a you design a seat that, that catches fire? Does your seat go in every single car, or is it just for certain cars? You're going to have to measure every single car, aren't you? Or, or look at different cars to make sure your seat fits in them. Why would you want to take that seat over anyone else's seat? And then you just you open up all these kind of problems. It's like, well, why on earth am I going to want to take my, my car and rip the seats out of that and buy this seat? What, what's so good about this seat that's so much better? And then you, you fall under that idea of, is, is my product actually worth anything? Or am I just creating something that's cool and something that I want in my car that probably already exists? So if you look at some of the top luxurious cars like Mercedes and Aldi and, and BMW, they probably have seats already that do that and a lot more. And they, I can assure you, they weren't designed and built over six months. They would have spent a lot of time uh, and resources and money in teams of designers building them. For you as a single individual to, to go away and design and produce something, just come on, let's be realistic. But it's okay. Sometimes you might think, right, I'm going to design that. Realistically designing a chair at that scale for that kind of device, a car or a motor vehicle, it's probably not going to happen. In fact, I would strongly advise against things like that. There's so many complexities in there. And designing furniture, if, if it's part of the theme, you, absolutely. But the function of the theme, I mean, there's so many functions there, it's just too unrealistic. So let's have a look at how we can take that idea, which is still a sound idea, into something that we can work with. Okay, so first of all, we could look at the different sections. So let's break it down into parts, first of all. So we have the headrest idea. We have the, the lumbar support idea. We have this section here for longer-legged drivers. Uh, and we have the heated seat thing. So there are four parts there. So if you do think of an unrealistic idea, segment it into different parts. It might be that actually your design will be, will be born out of an element of that. So again, it's taking that massive picture, the climate change, and taking into, well, what about this part of climate change can we help with? What about this part of introducing people back into cinemas can we help support? 
So going back to the theme also is a good way. How can I make people more comfortable while traveling? Well, I've got the headrest. So let's let's just let's go and look at that first of all. So headrests. So let's just very crudely draw a little headrest like that. Now, often in cars, and this again help, helps if you've been in one, or helps if you've been into the area what you're designing for. So if it's coastal, if your theme's about the coast, try and get to the coast. If your theme's about the cinema, try and get into a cinema. I know things are difficult right now, but there certainly will be opportunities for you to go in to those, certainly in, in, the, in, the, in the short term, in the future. But also, I would imagine most of you will have had the opportunity at some point in your life to have been and experienced things like the cinema or seen uh, the effects of climate change or have been to a coast. Like equally, I've, I've seen uh, a car headrest, for example. So I kind of get the idea of the shape. Now, I recognize that it usually has these two pins. Now, this is where my design idea is going. So if these are a standard thing, I could realistically manufacture the bar for that. Now, I think the bar, I'm going to do it on its side view. It's a bit like a flute and it has like little bits cut out like that. And they're like a rack. Uh, a little bit like a rack and pin, so it kind of catches as it goes down. So you can lift the headrest up and you can push it down. And it sort of racks up inside the actual seat, if that makes sense. And I, I could realistically, if your school or academy's got a center lathe and some steel or, or some aluminium bar, you, you could turn this down, you could file these out, you could, you could make those. Yeah, and you could turn this down here and have like a screw thread that you could screw into here somehow and bolt it in. So that process there is something that's doable. Equally, the amount of leather or, or leatherette or, or material I'd need for that is now far more reduced than what I had before. So, excellent. Now, I could have a look at the type of head restraint part. So maybe I could design something that was for my neck instead of my head. And maybe it's got like a little thing here and then it's got the two bars there. But maybe this is curved now. And my neck sort of sits in there like that. Now I'm not going to do any annotation with this. I'm just going to explain it and talk you through these ideas. But um, again, if you look at from a side view, they're usually cushioned like this, right? Well, what if we did one that is maybe cushioned a different way, like that, so that your head sort of sits in that space there, you know, on the headrest, maybe, and it's got the bars there like that. So again, we're starting to generate different ideas. This thing here could be worked on again. So let's just do a disc like that. And, and perhaps, perhaps this has like an additional feature in it maybe. I mean, it wouldn't be out of the realms to add something in there that perhaps, like, so maybe some LEDs or something like that to make it easier to see. And you don't want it too intrusive you want it to be and that sits in the, the back of the car like that maybe you just design one that's i don't know it's quite hard to draw in 3d but it's just got a really nice shape to it that's it's a little bit more ergonomic you know maybe it's like a luxurious version you know like that uh, stitched in like leatherette style cushioning maybe Anyway, so there's there's a few ideas for that. Now let's use the power of digital media and let's get the pinched right down over here out of the way. Uh, but we can draw a little line, a little arrows to that. Okay, so then we can go down the idea of this lumbar support. So let's get the lumbar support down here. Now lumbar support, if you're, if you're not sure already, I mean, this, again, this should take some research. But the spine of the human body, let's just get this right, does that naturally. So that's the sort of shape of the human body. And there's a bit of pelvic muscles there and, and your rib cages are up here and stuff like that. But it's this shape here that's interesting and that's what we need to capture with our lumbar support. So essentially if we start by having that, that shape, then the product can be like this and that can be there. Now, if we draw that again so let's get that, that lumbar support there let's very quickly flesh it out into something that's three-dimensional all I've done there is just draw it two-dimensional there 
and then just copy this line here. I'm going to draw my lines off at 45 degrees to make it 3D. Oh, I don't know I'm doing the wrong thing again, am I? Let's rub that out. So, here, if we had some kind of strap, like a seatbelt thing, maybe, we could loop that round an already existing chair and have that as like an extra cushion that goes at the back. And in fact, I, find, I, think, I think you have them on airplanes, don't you? Something similar to that. It's like a lumbar support to, to support you while you're, you're out on your plane. And it could be that, actually, with this device, I mean, we, you could start to structure it and think, well, okay, if I had a timber bit at the top here, uh, this grit could be laminated plywood, so I could I could actually make this with some jigs and, and laminate that. Laminating, if you were unsure, is when you uh, would soak, essentially, you soak really thin veneers of, of plywood, really thin sheets of plywood, soak it in water, and then if you clamp it and, and hold that clamp in what's called a jig, you can actually bend uh, your, your, your piece of material. So I'll show you what that looks like. So if I have a block of wood like that, another block of wood like this, and if I put my sheet of plywood in between there, and then what I do is I clamp these. This is a very crude looking clamp. And I clamp those down, hold them there. The plywood will actually go in, into that shape. So that's uh, laminated. Do you know, I've had an idea. I could probably do with having a, a, a video on different processes. That might be interesting. If you do want me to have a video on different processes and talking about all the different things we can do with materials, I mean, it would be quite lengthy, but certainly in the short term, then uh, hit me in the comments down below and let me know what kind of process you'd like me to do and show you. Uh, it might be one for a future video. Anyway, digressed a bit. Uh, another plank of wood down here at the bottom. This essentially can just be a plank of wood like that. It goes in there. And then maybe we just cut that to shape on like a scroll saw or something and that can slot in there. Maybe that, maybe that is all one shape. That's just probably one plank of wood like that. That I've just curved or whatever it is. Like that. So just get on a scroll saw and just, you know, or a jigsaw. If your uh, technicians at school or your teachers at school allow you to, well, they won't allow you to use a jigsaw, but if you ask them to cut you a jigsaw if you haven't got access to tools yourself. But you can cut it with coping saws and things like that. Take a long time. It's quite difficult to do, but even maybe some scroll saws if it's thin material you could probably do that anyway so I'm kind of showing it like there it's like we, we can pin and bolt and glue this together and pin and bolt that thing in there like that and that's the outside done and then you can make a little net and, and clad it with uh, like you would um, I think you like the, the the dice net you you remember uh, it folds around Some, something similar like that with fabric Hold it around, you can staple it into the sides and probably glue it on and then you can sew it in, you know. And, and, and all inside here maybe could be cushioned. So this will have some flex to it because it's plywood. Uh, anyway, so th there is something that's quite realistic we could create. And then at the back here we could have a slot where we could have like a little belt and we could manufacture the little connector somehow. I, mean, I don't know how you'd make that, but you could have a look at creating something that interlocks maybe and just goes around the back of the chair or the seat giving you that lumbar support and and that I mean all this idea here I mean we've got loads of room to play about with this shape here it, you know it could be like that it could be like this you, know, you can create all different kinds of versions of that and develop it and test them and make little card models and put them in your back and go, oh, that's comfortable that's not comfortable you could do use a group feedback and ask those what they th what they think quite quick quite snappy things and again using the power of digital media I'm going to nip all this and shrink it down like that, down here. And then again, I've got this link now to the lumbar support, like that. Uh, oh, I was going to say, actually, you could put like a motor inside. Maybe you could have like, maybe make it vibrate a little bit to have like a little, <laughs> maybe it could be some kind of massaging part. You play about with it, have a go. I mean, I've never made anything that's massaging before, so. I'm not really well versed in how to do that, but surely there's something to do with motors in there that I have to make something move. But we could practice that, maybe have a play with that, see how that works. The movable part again, poor, oh, actually quite tricky, I suppose. But you'd have probably some kind of space there, maybe some dowels in it that allows it to move forward and backwards. 
And then when it moves, it, it just slides out. Almost like a draw set, I suppose. But how you'd create that to go into a chair would be quite challenging, I would imagine. But again, you could explore it. I mean, it's certainly the idea of having something that extends, that you can sit on, that extends to allow your legs to, to fit on there. Maybe, maybe it's got something that that this swings out, you know. So that, that that's actually there when it's when it slides in and when it slides out, they swing down, drop down, hit the ground like that to make it more stable. And this sort of attaches to a chair somehow. Don't know how it attaches to a chair, but then it allows your legs to have a little bit more room. As an idea, but again, this might be something that you go, oh, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. Uh, and that's just the nature of it, really. You might just go, oh, I've exhausted that idea there. And then that's sort of the end of that. But again, we're, we're taking this idea of something that's very unrealistic uh, and transforming it into something that is possible. Uh, the heated seat idea, again, I've got no idea how you do this, but you'd, you'd probably have an element or something here that eats up. And then you'd, you'd probably have a circuit somewhere in here that allows electricity to flow through this, which eventually will heat that up. And then you'd have to sort of coat it with something that's heat proof. You wouldn't want to make it out of timber and then all of a sudden catch your bottom on fire. That would be, well, be a bit of, bit of trouble, I suppose, if you made a product that set people on fire. Um, but that's why I suppose why we have to develop these things. But uh, Maybe it's wrapped in fabric somehow. Maybe it's got like a a timber frame I mean timber frame and then it's wrapped in some kind of fabric or something like that and maybe it's like a cushion maybe it's like a heated cushion or something that you can have you can just add in because not everyone's got the luxury of a heated seat but maybe if you did make one that you could put into a cushion then you might be able to have something like that and maybe have a little switch over here to turn it on maybe you could maybe program it the circuit to have like three levels of to send more current down which would eventually then heat it up and you'd have you could do like an a stable circuit with a little timer and uh, that'd be able to switch off i mean this is very advanced stuff i mean this even though you're just designing a pillow that actually heats up it it would be pretty advanced in terms of a design for a product and it's it's something that's right down the sort of rabbit hole sort of idea it's like really something that's very sort of complex and you'd, you'd have to sort of work very closely with your your classroom teacher to design something like that but this is like all health and safety risks and but that, having said that it does offer a fantastic opportunity to do some research into that that field so anyway so let's let's wrap it up there so there's a few ideas and I, I don't want to lose the message of this video really which is essentially how we can create something that seemingly is totally unrealistic and produce something that is actually quite doable right so what have we learned in this session we've learned that often students can take a design idea to an extreme level and you can often think oh, i'm going to design this i'm going to design a chair i'm going to design a car and it's actually far too far-fetched but it is probably the starting point for your your investigation into like well what do I do to, to answer that question and, and the actual answer probably is this but then if I break that down into its little parts I can find a solution for, for an element of it so the, the headrest idea or the heat seat idea or the lumbar support idea and, and that's where the design ideas come from because then I could have a page on ideas on this a page of ideas on that a page of ideas on this and of course the beauty at the moment currently I mean we're in the middle of or just the beginnings of the summer so the beauty of that is course you can design something at home and the exam board are, are allowing you to work from home now currently don't know how that'll work in future years but certainly in 2020 you're allowed to work from home so you're allowed to design to your heart's content so the more ideas you create I suppose the more comfortable you'll be with what you're going to create as a solution so I hope that answers your questions about how you can make design ideas more realistic till next time don't forget to subscribe. That's where you never miss one of our videos. We release them every Monday from now, hopefully all the way until it's until September, and hopefully beyond that as well. Now, I'll link you a useful video here or a playlist, and if you do want to subscribe, hit my little beautiful face over here, and you won't miss another one of our videos. Until next time, stay safe. Bye now. <laughs>